Hi, I am Avijit Dutta. I am going to present our work Improved Security Bound of EWCDM and DWCDM. It's a joint work with Nilanjan Dutta and Kushankur Dutta. We are all from Institute for Advancing Intelligence, TCG Crest. This paper mainly studies different kind of non-space map constructions. Therefore, we begin our talk with a popular non-space MAC construction which is known as Wegman Carter MAC. So Wegman Carter MAC was proposed by Wegman and Carter. Uh, this MAC takes the message M which is hashed through a hash function HK and the hash value is then randomly masked to generate the tag. To generate the random string, we apply a pseudo-random function on distinct nouns n. This MAC gives the optimal security bound. In particular, when all the nonces are distinct across different queries, then it achieves epsilon times QV security bound, where epsilon is the almost zero universal probability of the underlying key hash function, and QV is the number of verification attempts that an adversary can make. However, an inherent drawback of this construction is that if the nonce is reused for once, then the construction does not give any security. So security of this construction is completely lost in the nonce misuse scenario. <coughs> to solve this problem, one natural solution was to encrypt the output of the Wegman Carter Mac and thus the resulting construction is known as encrypted Wegman Carter Mac. The security bound of this encrypted Wegman Carter Mac is as good as the Wegman Carter. In particular, it gives the optimal security bound in the non suspecting setting, and additionally, it gives beyond but the bound security in the non misuse setting. However, the pseudo random function is rarely available in practice. So therefore, one can think of to replace this pseudo-random function with a pseudo-random permutation. Now if you replace this pseudo-random function with a pseudo-random permutation, then the resulting construction will not give adequate security. In particular, if you replace this fk with a block cipher ek, then in the non respecting setting, the security of the resulting construction will drop down to the birthday bound. Because if you replace this fk with ek, then an adversary can make too many queries where all the nonces in these queries will be distinct and the message will be same. Therefore, all the q inputs to the second block cipher call will be distinct. And as a result of that, all the tags that he will obtain will also be distinct. Therefore, all the q distinct tags can be distinguished from the uniform random tags if, if the adversary can make at least 2 power n by 2 queries. Therefore, the PRF security of the construction will only give the birth about security. As a possible, possible remedy of the solution, one can think of to instantiate the pseudorandom function with the popular sum of sum of pseudorandom permutation. And we know that the sum of pseudorandom permutation is a very good PRF. In particular, it gives the optimal security bound. So therefore, if you replace the pseudorandom function fk with the sum of PRP construction, then the resulting construction will give optimal security bound. But this construction requires three block cipher calls. Therefore, we ask that can we reduce the number of block cipher calls? To answer this question, in crypto 2016, Cogliati and Seurin proposed their construction which is known as encrypted Wegman Carter with Davis Mayer construction, in which the pseudorandom function of EWC Mac is instantiated by the key David Mayer construction as follows. This Mac gives 2n by 3 bit Mac security in the non respecting setting and n by 2 bit security in the non misuse setting. In this paper, Cogliati and Suryan have conjectured that their construction is secure even if the adversary can make up to 2 power n many queries in the non-suspecting setting. 
They have also conjectured that if the two block cipher keys become identical, then also the construction will retain the same security in the non-suspecting setting. That means that the single kit EWCDM construction will retain 2 power 2 n by 3 bit security in non-suspecting setting. In crypto 2017, Manning and Naves they proved the optimal PRF security of EWCDM construction in non-suspecting setting. However, their security proof was essentially relied on Paterin's general mirror theory technique. However, the proof of general mirror theory technique by Paterin for 2 power n bound is still a matter of debate. In DCC 18, Cogniati and Seudin, they acknowledged that proving the security of single kit EWCDM is very hard. Therefore, we ask that can we design a nonce based BBB secure Mac with a single block cipher. In crypto 2018, Dutta et al. proposed their construction which is known as decrypted Wegman Carter with Davis Mayer. In this construction, notice that the second block cipher call of the EWCDM is now replaced with the inverse of EK. So therefore, the construction essentially boils down to having a single block cipher key. The authors have proved that their construction is 2n by 3 bit max secure in the non-suspecting setting and n by 2 bit max secure in the non-misuse setting. However, their construction can take 2n by 3 bit nonce. That means the nonce space of the DWCDM construction was only restricted to 2 power 2n by 3 many possibilities. However, the security proof of the construction was essentially relied on a couple of assumptions of the underlying hash function. In particular, the underlying hash function needs to be 2 power minus s, 2 power minus n regular, 2 power minus n 3 way regular, and it has to be 2 power minus n almost or universal. In this paper, we ask that can we improve the security bound of EWCDM and DWCDM? Because till now, what we have seen that these two constructions are secure only about 2n by 3 bit secure in the non suspecting setting. Therefore, we study that if it is possible to improve the security bound of these two constructions. To analyze the security bound to, to having the improved security bound of these two constructions, we first discuss the extended mirror theory technique. So in extended mirror theory technique, we deal with a system of equations and non-equations. So in the left hand side of this figure, we can see that there is a system of bivariate affine equations and in the right hand side, there is a system of bivariate affine non-equations. And this system of equations and non-equations are defined over say r many variables. The goal of this extended mirror theory is to lower bound the number of solutions to the system of equations and non-equations such that all the variables, all these r variables, they will be distinct. We can view the system of equations and non-equations in terms of graph. Then we represent the set of variables as a set of vertices. That means all the variables can be casted to a set of vertices. If two variables are associated to an equation, say p1 plus p2 equals to lambda, then we give a solid red edge and that edge should be undirected between the corresponding two vertices. Similarly, if the two, two, two variables are associated through a non-equation, say p1 plus p2 is not equal to lambda prime, then we put a dashed blue edge which is obviously leveled and that should be undirected between the corresponding two vertices. So for example here the equation if we have an equation say p1 plus p2 equals to lambda then we put a solid red edge between the corresponding vertices say v1 and v2 with a level say lambda. And if we have a non-equation say p1 plus p2 not equals to lambda prime then we put a dashed blue edge between v1 and v2 with a corresponding label lambda prime. As an example, we can see that we have a system of equations that p1 plus p2 equals to lambda 1 and as a result of that we put a solid red edge between the vertices v1 and v2 with the corresponding label lambda 1 and we have another equation p1 plus p3 equals to lambda 2 therefore we put another edge between the vertices v1 and v3 and the corresponding label lambda 2. Similarly, we have a system of equations and non-equations, say p1 plus p2 equals to lambda 1 
and therefore we have put an edge between vertex v1 and v2 with the level lambda 1 we have an equation p3 plus v4 equals to lambda 2 therefore we have put an edge between v3 and v4 with the edge with the level lambda 2 and we have a non equation say p2 plus p3 which is not equals to lambda 3 and therefore we have put an edge between the vertex v2 and v3 and that is a dashed blue edge with the corresponding level lambda 3 so in this way we can cast a system of equations and non equations to an equivalent graph we say that a graph is bad if it satisfies either of these following three conditions. The conditions are the following. If the graph contains a cycle, if, if you take any path in the graph, let the path be P, P, and if you sum up the edge levels of the edges which are involved in the path, and if the sum is zero, then we say that the graph is bad. And finally, if there is a cycle in the graph, say C, that involves exactly one non-equation H, and we denote this non-equation H with a blue dashed H. So if the cycle involves a non-equation H, say E, then we will consider that graph to be bad only if the level of that non-equation H is the sum of the levels of the path P, where P is basically C minus E. So C is the cycle and E is the non-equation H. So if you consider the path P which is C minus E, then and if you take the sum of the edges, sum of the levels of the edges which are involved in the path P and that thing is assigned as the level of the non-equation H, then we will call that graph is bad. In this paper, we have shown uh, this extended mirror theory result for two types of graph. The first type is for a general graph and the second type is for a bipartite graph. We have shown that for a fixed good general graph, the number of solutions to the associated system of equation and non-equation is at least 2 power n falling factorial s over 2 power n qm times 1 minus some error term where s is the number of vertices and qm is the total number of edges. Here QC is the total number of edges of the subgraph of the graph G which is generated if we just remove the non-equation edges from the graph G. So the subgraph, the generated subgraph say G prime is generated out of the graph G by deleting only the non-equation edges from the graph G. Similarly, we have shown uh, the following result of the extended mirror theory for a bipartite graph that for a fixed good bipartite graph the number of solutions to the associated system of equation and non-equation is at least 2 power n falling factorial SL times 2 power n falling factorial SR over 2 power n QM times 1 minus some error term, where SL is the number of vertices of the left partition and SR is the number of vertices in the right partition of the bipartite graph, and QM is the total number of edges. Similarly, QC is the number of edges of the subgraph which is generated out of the graph G by deleting the non-equation edges and here obviously this QV is the total number of non-equation edges which are present in the graph G. Okay, now we discuss briefly the what is edge coefficient technique. So edge coefficient technique is a very powerful combinatorial tool which is used to bound the distinguishing advantage of two random system. So here we are assuming that this two random system is basically uh, this uh, two algorithms, this sign, signing algorithm and the verification algorithm which are present in the real world and in the ideal world we have uh, two random systems say the first one is the uh, random function and the uh, second one is a reject symbol or the uh, about oracle. Okay, so the signing, so here is an adversary, that adversary is interacting with the pair of oracles either in the real world or in the ideal world. So if the adversary is interacting with the real world, then it has access to the signing oracle and the verification oracle. And these two oracles are basically the keyed oracles and the adversary does not access to this key, does not have access to this key. And if the adversary is interacting with this ideal world, then it is actually interacting with this random oracle and the about oracle. So if the adversary is interacting with the real world, then if it queries with the message M, then the signing oracle will get back, will, will uh, return the corresponding tag. And if it is interacting with the verification oracle, then the verification oracle will either 
say yes or no depending on whether the tag, uh, message tag pair is a valid or not. In contrast, if it is interacting with the ideal world, then if it queries to the random oracle with say message A, then the random oracle will randomly sample the tag and if it uh, interacts with this about oracle with say message tag pair M, T, then the idea this, this about oracle will always return about. And the distinguishing advantage of this adversary A to distinguish the real world from the ideal world is defined something like this. And to upper bound this advantage using the edge coefficient technique, one needs to do this following three things. First of all, they have to identify the bad transcript. Then we need to, we need to upper bound the probability of the bad transcripts in the ideal world. And then if we fix a good transcript, then we have to lower bound the ratio of the real to ideal interpolation probability for that good transcript. So in detail, so we denote this XID, which is the probability distribution of the transcript induced in the real world. XID is the probability of distribution of transcript in the ideal world. And MathCal V, which is denoted as the disjoint union of these two sets, say good T and bad T. So bad T is basically the set of all bad transcript and good T is the set of all good transcript. So what is transcript? So transcript is basically the uh, summarization or the summary of the interaction between the adversary and the oracle. So having defined this, we now state the main theorem of the edge coefficient technique which says that there exists a positive number, positive real number, say epsilon ratio, such that the ratio of the internet of, of the of the uh, interpolation probability in the real world and the ideal world is lower bounded by one minus epsilon ratio and there exists an, another positive real number say epsilon bad such that this probability that xid belongs to the set of bad transcript is upper bounded by epsilon bad then we can upper bound the advantage of distinguishing the two random systems real and ideal which is upper bounded by the sum of these two quantities epsilon ratio and epsilon bad. Okay, now using this edge coefficient technique, we will prove the uh, uh, we will pr we will prove the security bound of EWCD. So one can cast the uh, system or uh, one can cast the EW if evaluation of EWCDM to a system of equations and uh, non equations. So in particular, if you have we, we have the system of QN many Mac equation and QV many verification equations. And one can naturally cast the system of equation and non-equation to a corresponding graph. Where this lambda i is basically the sum of nonce and the hash value of the message. Similarly, lambda i prime is the sum of the uh, nonce and the hash value of the message, where ni prime and the mi prime is the credit. Uh, nonce and the message in the verification query. Okay. Now, after this interaction is over, the, trans the, the transcript will be generated and we then we will uh, partition this transcript into two sets, the bad set and the good set. We say that the transcript is bad if you take any two queries such that their T value collides and the lambda value collides. Look, look at this equation that if you cast this equation in terms of graph, then we will not get any cycle because this n1 and n2, so these are all distinct, right? So if you take any two equations and for these two equations, if their t value matches and the corresponding lambda value matches, then since p1 is a permutation, then therefore this n value will be matched. But since we are proving this security in the non-suspecting setting, so this situation cannot arise in the real world. So this situation can only occur in the ideal world. Therefore, that event will distinguish it from the random system or from the ideal world. So therefore, we take this uh, we take this event to be bad. Number two is that once we cast this equation in terms of graph, it will basically lead to different components, and we bound the size of the component. In particular, we say that if the generated, if the, if the size of the generated component is at least QM to the power 2 by 3, then we call the transcript is bad. And finally, if we have a forgery attempt such that the, cor the corresponding uh, nonce and the tag collides and also the hash value collides, 
That means suppose an adversary queries with say M prime T prime and M prime such that M prime is is matched to some previous query nonce, T prime match with the corresponding obtained tag, and eventually the hash value of the message which is queried with the message M prime that has also been collided. If these three things happens, then we will say that the transcript is bad. So if the transcript is not bad, that means for a good transcript, and if we have a good transcript, then we can also generate a good graph. I mean, we, we can also generate a graph, and that graph will be good graph. So one can easily identify that the structure of good graph will be something like this. That means it will be acyclic. And the size of the components will be at most qm to the power 2 by 3. And therefore, we can apply the mirror theory for this good graph. And obviously, one, one should note that these graphs are actually the bipartite graphs. So therefore, we can apply this mirror theory for the bipartite graph to lower bound the real interpolation probability. Next, we come to the overview of the security proof of DWCDM. So as we have written down the MAC equation and the verification equation for EWCDM, we can similarly write down the MAC equation and the verification equation for the DWCDM. So again, we have this QM many MAC equation and a QV many verification equations. And generally, one can uh, cast this uh, system of MAC equation and the verification equation in terms of graph. Again, we identify the bad graph and the good graph. So we say that a graph is bad if any of these following conditions is satisfied. So the first condition says that the if the component size of the MAC graph is at least 5, if it contains a cycle, or if it contains a path of length 3 such that their level sum is 0, and if there is a uh, uh, graph of, uh, uh, if, if there is an edge with a level 0, if there is an edge in a MAC graph with level 0, other, uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in the, the, so there are some of the additional uh, bad events. So, for example, if the MAC graph contains a cycle that includes a dashed blue edge. There are uh, other, another bad additional bad events. That means, say for example, if we take two MAC queries such that their tag collides and the lambda value also collides or the nonce and the tag collides or and the lambda value collides. The number of pair of MAC queries such that the n and t collides or t the, the, the two tag collides it at least qm to the power 2 by 3 or there is a MAC query such that the tag is 0. If none of these bad events happen then the corresponding transcript will be good and if you uh, cast this transcript in terms of graph then we will land up with these good graphs and therefore we can apply this mirror theory for the general graph to lower bound the real interpolation probability for such good graphs. Next, we look at some of the glimpses of the bounding bad events. So, we first say that there is a bound, so, so there is a component of size at least 5. So, if we have a component of at least 5, then we will, we will have this many possibilities. And we have shown that bounding of this event is 2 power qm over 2 power 3n by 4, where qm is the number of uh, total edges of the, of the, of the corresponding graph. The second event is that bounding cycle in a MAC graph. So in order to bound cycle in a MAC graph, we have these four possibilities. Okay, we will not have a cycle of length 5 because we have already bounded that the component size is of at least 5. So if we have a component of size 5, then that actually reduces to this first event. And we have shown that the bound of this event is maximum of this. The third event is that the bounding MAC graph having a path of length 3 with level sum 0. So we have these two possibilities. And for that, again, we have our desired bound. For bounding MAC graph that, that contains a cycle which actually includes a dashed blue edge. That means we have a cycle, but that cycle includes exactly one non-equation edge or a dashed blue edge. And we have this, so, so in this case, we have categorized it into three steps. So first, the bounding self-loop and parallel edges. For this, we have, so self-loop is for one possibility. For bounding parallel edges, we have these following two possibilities. And for each of these cases, we have seen that this bound is in our desired range. Next, we bound the triangles. So for triangles, we have these three following possibilities. And for each of them, we have shown that this bound is again 
in our desired range. So in particular, the bound is QV times epsilon 3 reg, uh, the maximum of QV times epsilon 3 reg, and QM over 2 power 5 n by 4. Finally, we have the uh, we, we have this case of bounding the squares because again we are essentially uh, bounding the mag graph which will contain a cycle that includes a dash blue edge. So we will have a bounding uh, we will we will have this structure of square and we have these following three possibilities and for that we have shown that our bound that we have obtained is in our desired range. Note that we will not go for we will not go beyond this because if we go beyond this, then again that will include uh, uh, th then that actually reduces to this possibilities to component of size at least five. Okay, so uh, finally uh, we want just to make a remark that how our proof is different from the original DWCDM proof. Okay, so in the original DWCDM proof, the authors have uh, 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 authors have casted the system of equations to a graph in a different terminology. So they have uh, uh, they, they have represented a vertex to be an equation, and they put an edge, edge between two vertices if the corresponding equations share a variable. But in our setting, what we have done that we we have represented a vertex as a variable in the, of the corresponding system of equation and non-equation, and we have put an edge between two vertices if these two variables are associated by an equation. So if we cast their representation in terms of our terminology, then the corresponding bad events that was generated in the original DWCDM proof is of the following. That the induced graph contains a cycle, any components in the induced graph contains a path of length at least 3, and induced graph contains a cycle that includes a non-equation edge. Whereas in our bad events, we induced a graph that contains a cycle, but the second condition is different. That we are actually allowing the, the we are actually allowing the path of length at least three, but not beyond four. Okay, so here we are actually allowing that the path can be three or more than three, but it should not go beyond four. Moreover, the induced graph contains a cycle that includes a non-equation edge. Okay, so to conclude this talk. We have shown the 3n by 4 bit security of EWCDM and DWCDM. Uh, in fact, the optimal security of these two constructions can be proven if you use the general result of pattern mirror theory. But again, the, the correctness of the general, uh, uh, general result of mirror theory is not established yet. Uh, Proof of this optimal security of DWCDM requires underlying hash to be k-wise regular. So for EWCDM, if you want to prove the optimal security of EWCDM, then the hash function, uh, I mean the uh, almost all universal pr pr property of the underlying hash function is sufficient. But if you want to prove the optimal security of DWCDM, then you require this assumption that the underlying hash function should be k-wise regular. And finally, one can improve the security bound of 1k DWCDM from uh, from 2n by 3 bits to 3n by 4 bits using the similar technique that we have employed in this paper and uh, thank you for the thank you for listening to this talk and if you have any query you can uh, directly send an email to any one of us thank you